Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we will begin with an opening statement from Coach Williams and then go to questions. Again, please raise your hand to indicate you would like to ask a question and when you're called on to state your name and affiliation. Coach, a brief statement and then we'll get to questions. Well, guys, I apologize for blowing my nose in public, but it's uh, I'm a little emotional at times and the last game of the year is always extremely emotional. I've been very lucky. I've been in the locker room four times, one as assistant, and three as a head coach, where the last game of the year was really emotional in a good way. But uh, this, uh, before I say anything else, I just thought that uh, Coach, coach Guard, I call him Greg, I think he and his staff did a great job of getting their kids so much ready to play. Every loose ball, it seemed like they got. They, Every time we gave them an open look, and some of them even not open, they made shots. Uh, 13 for 27 from three-point line, and uh, Davison and Trice getting 29 and 21. Those kids played really well, and the big guys fought our big guys and blocked shots and made it difficult for us to score inside, particularly in the first half. But just to congratulate Greg and his staff on the job they did and congratulate their kids. Uh, you know, they didn't finish the season as well as they would have liked. Uh, I think it was three of their last four were losses or something like that. But those seniors, when you get into uh, tournament play, sometimes they really, really want something and they work exceptionally hard for that. And they performed tonight, and so congratulations to them. My club, uh, I didn't do a very good job. Uh, it's been a difficult year. Uh, but everybody's had the problems with COVID that we've had. Uh, it's been a hard year to uh, uh, push and pull, push and pull every other day to try to get something done. And uh, uh, But how can you be any luckier than Roy Williams is coaching basketball? Um, I didn't think we shot it very well. We took some bad shots in the first half. Uh, I forget now, I think we had – what did we have, six turnovers in the first half? And then we all – six turnovers in the first half and we had eight bad shots. So that's 14 of the same thing. Bad shots and turnovers lead to runouts. And, and I thought our turnovers and bad shots were uh, the key factor in the game other than the fact that their shots went in. Uh, I don't know what they shot for the game. Well, 50.1, uh, but 48 from a three-point line. So uh, – I thought our bad shots and turnovers hurt us in the first half. They out-rebounded us uh, in the first half. Uh, I think at the end of the game, uh, they still out-rebounded us 37-34, and not many people have done that. So they were their coaching staff got them to be more in tune and more uh, focused with better desire and uh, more alert to go for the offensive rebounds. And uh, uh, got to congratulate them. Uh, they played very, very well. I think Greg gets to evaluate his own team, but I thought they uh, played very well. And uh, Roy Williams didn't coach very well. Thank you, Coach. First question goes to Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Uh, Brendan, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Coach. This is Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Uh, you know, you mentioned the emotion that comes with the last game of the season. Can you just elaborate on the, the particular emotion that comes with this group of players, these specific guys, this specific season? What, what makes this one different? Well, I think I'm so proud of them as young people. This was a hard year, guys. Come on. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you remember from your uh, freshman year in college, none of my freshmen have any memories of anything like that. Uh, uh, you've heard me say before, they went to class for six days, and that's it. So they haven't had the college experience a normal student can have. They haven't had the college experience of uh, home football weekends and how the pageantry and everything of college football is so much fun. They haven't had the uh, experience of running out of that tunnel with 21,750 people uh, going crazy. We had uh, Tyler Hansbro and Bobby Fraser, and it may have been somebody else. I think we had three players here today, but. Tyler told me one time he'd do anything to run out of that tunnel again. So I'm so proud of our kids for uh, going through this. And it wasn't nearly as much fun as it's been in the past. Uh, 
I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that we had seven freshmen in our top 10 or 11 players. And 11 players, I guess, seven freshmen. You know, and I think that uh, Greg's team with eight seniors or six seniors and four of them redshirt seniors or whatever is, you love to have an experienced team in, in March. I loved having my team regardless what grade they were in. Uh, so it's just when you coach kids, you uh, have a special bond with them. And this year was really hard on young people, and I was really proud of them. Next question to Andrew Jones. Andrew, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, Coach, early in the second half, I think it was, I think Davis had hit a long three from the top of the key, and you just kind of turned and shrugged your shoulders. Um, how much of what they did from the perimeter was what you guys allowed them to do, and how much it was just that sometimes guys are just scorching hot and there ain't a whole lot you can do about it? I don't think we allowed them to do anything. I think in, in sports, you know, in basketball particularly, it's it's man-on-man -man a lot of times. And uh, I think that Caleb and RJ and Kerwin, uh, they wanted to do well. Uh, we weren't good enough or experienced enough or coached well enough or all of the above tonight. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's frustrating, guys. I mean, uh, like I said, we um, take bad shots and turn the ball over, and that's been Achilles' heel for us all year long. But the kids want to do well. I've never had a kid that wanted to turn the ball over. I've never had a kid that wanted to miss a shot. Uh, but... Uh, you know, it's one of the lowest field goal percentages of any team I've ever coached, one of the lowest three-point percentages, one of the lowest free throw percentage. In some ways, it may have been uh, the worst at all, but uh, kids didn't want to miss them. I know that. Uh, but the bottom line is um, 13 out of 27 for them, five out of 13 for us, so that's uh, eight. So that scores by 24 points from the three-point line. Uh, but their guys made shots. And then for somebody to out-rebound us 37-34, I think there's two other times, could have been three, that somebody's out-rebounded us all year. So uh, you look at that, and then 15 assists, uh, seven turnovers for them. Uh, it's just sometimes the other guy on that particular moment is just better than you are. And that's what happened tonight. At this specific moment, their team, their players, their coaches were better than we were. Next question goes to C.L. Brown. C.L., please unmute yourself. Hi, uh, Roy. Uh, what do you want the young guys to kind of take from this NCAA experience that, you know, down the line that they will learn from in future years? The same thing, C.L. I've always said when you lose, I hope it'll be fuel for you to uh, say that you don't like this feeling, uh, that uh, you want to have a different feeling, and the way to have a different feeling is to, to play better. And the way you play better is to prepare better. You practice harder. You're more focused. You're more disciplined. Uh, that's what I hope they use it as is fuel. Uh, basketball can be the greatest game in the world. And that when you lose, it's like somebody uh, reaches in and grabs your heart and shakes it right in front of you. It just sort of taunts you a little bit. But uh, I'm coaching basketball. That's pretty daggum good. Next question goes to Greg Barnes. Greg, go ahead and unmute, unmute yourself. Hey, Roy. Uh, I want to ask a similar question to what CL did, but it's kind of a, more of a broad one. I realize you didn't get the team to come along as much as you would have wanted them to this year, but given the youth and inexperience of this team, uh, are there some building blocks there from what you saw over the last couple of weeks of the season? I think so. And, you know, you guys, I hate to – you know, when you start talking about you, how inexperienced your youth or seven freshmen, those, that sounds like excuses, and, and I don't want to use that, uh, but uh, but it is facts. Uh, they are facts, I guess is better English. But, uh, yeah, I think that we've got uh, uh, the foundation. It can be really something. Uh, you know, but kids nowadays have decisions to make, uh, uh, whether to leave early and go to the NBA, and we'll have to wait and see how those situations uh, – uh, pan out, but uh, it is something that uh, uh, the foundation here is to uh, is something that could be really, really special. I remember uh, Tyler Hansbrough's freshman year, starting three freshmen, 
start, start of the season and then started just two down the stretch, but still played four or five. Uh, and I said at the end, they're going to be really good. And they were. They won a national championship as a senior and as a junior went to the Final Four. Uh, but times are different now, and there was a lot of uh, different uh, pulls to them or pulls at them, uh, stresses and pressures that they and their families feel. And uh, so <coughs> we'll just have to wait and see. Next question to Kiara Luck. Good evening, Coach. Um, I just want to know, how have you grown uh, this season, and what will you take away to be a better coach um, going forward? I started the season when I was 70 years old, and I feel like I'm 103 right now, Kara. So it's, uh, that's the first thing that's, that's happened. Uh, it's, it has been a, a, a trying year. It has been a year that uh, uh, 2020 and the first part of 2021, I haven't enjoyed that much. Um, been a lot of stresses, a lot of things on, but I think that uh, each year you, you get to be a better coach, you get more experienced yourself. And uh, this year I focused almost every press conference on talking about turnovers or uh, not the quality, a high quality of shot that I wanted us to get and not running at the pace we wanted to run. And so some way, somehow, I've got to do a better job of uh, getting the guys to make changes. and. Uh, 29 games, I'm still saying uh, a lot of the same kind of thing. So uh, I've got to figure out a way to make that happen. All right, one final question from Adam Smith. Adam, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Roy, what Armando obviously had a explosive start to the second half and really got involved quickly. What do you think took him so long to get going? I think he had one shot in the first half. What did you see happening there? Oh, you know, he played about 10 minutes, but he had one shot. And uh, I don't know if he had a rebound. He had one rebound or zero, something like that. So the first half was pretty ugly, and I challenged our big guys to be more effective in the second half, to be more aggressive. And uh, I think we did that. And, you know, if we could have done that for the entire course of the game, it would have been uh, uh, a lot better for us. I don't know that we would have won because they were really, really good. But uh, – I think that he did focus much better in the second half and, and Garrison as well. I mean, at half, Armando was 0 for 1 and Garrison was 1 for 7. And those are kids that uh, have led our team basically all season long. So uh, that's what I would say. We just perhaps focused on it a little bit better. All right, thank you, Coach. We appreciate your time today. We'll be joined momentarily by Garrison Brooks. Please use this time to raise or lower your hands as necessary. Thank you. We are joined by Garrison Brooks. We'll begin the press conference. Again, use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask Garrison a question. Our first question goes to Ross Martin. Ross, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Garrison. Um, Roy was vis visibly emotional in the press conference. I was wondering what the locker room was like after the loss, what he was talking to you all about, what was he going through, and, and kind of the emotion of you and your teammates. Yeah, uh, really emotional because, I mean, it's our last, this is our last game together. Um, just some tough, tough to realize it's the end of your season. Next question to Andrew Jones. Garrison, um, they out rebounded you guys. I believe it was 37, 34 rebounding. Was it exactly a strength of theirs coming in? 
Uh, so what did they do to kind of keep you guys from having the kind of success on the glass that you normally do have? Boss up. All right, next question to Kiara Luck. Hey, Garrison, I just wanted to know, um, how do you just move on from this and appreciate your last year from Carolina and look forward to your future? Yeah, uh, personally, just a great experience. Uh, didn't never end it each season how I wanted it to, but just something I always be grateful for. Next up is JB Ricks. Hey, Garrison, thanks for taking out the time. My, my question is pretty similar is in regards to your entire career, though, here at North Carolina. Um, what did you take from it the most that you'll be able to use, you know, in your life beyond North Carolina? And well, wh what were your shortcomings throughout your career? Uh, come in with a positive mindset every day, trying to accomplish something. Um, I mean, if you work in a group, you probably could, you, you're going to accomplish more. And you, as soon as you get on the same page, you'll be great. But uh, come in. Work as hard as you can every day, and the results will be in your favor. Next question from Brandon Marks of The Athletic. Hey, Garrison. Roy had mentioned how just with all the, the COVID precautions and the experience being so different this year, it wasn't necessarily as fun as past years. I'm just wondering, can you sort of elaborate on how tough this year was and, and you know, is there still validation in having, you know, made it this far? Yeah, uh, really tough. I mean, of course, we couldn't do as much activities we want together. Couldn't hang around each other as much. Couldn't, couldn't go out and enjoy campus as much. Uh, just a lot different. But uh, I'm still very grateful. I still think I still had a lot of fun with our guys. I mean, you see how hard we worked to uh, get to this point. And you just got to be grateful for times like this. I mean, everybody dedicates themselves to one goal, and you see how far we got. Next question goes to C.L. Brown. Garrison, how much do you feel like uh, the experience of Wisconsin having, you know, basically six seniors in their rotation, how much do you feel like that kind of favored them tonight? That is a lot. I mean, you think about how many games they played in, the uh, environments. Um, you also think about how many tournaments they played in. So that all goes into account. I think experience counts for a lot. Next question for Greg Barnes. Greg, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Garrison. Um, I know the game just wrapped up, season concluded, but ha have you given any thought to the possibility of returning next season? A little bit. All right. Uh, next question to Adam Smith. Garrison, what? You know, it's, you guys obviously are a young team with the, the six and seven freshmen. What sort of foundation do you think this season provided? And what do you think, you know, maybe the future holds for, for the core of this group? What do you see ahead? Yeah, the future is really bright for this group. I think it's going to be tremendous for them that they experienced this, uh, got in the tournament, lost. I mean, you can always build off this. I mean, it's always going to be motivation for us. Um, just they can always come back and work really hard, and it's, it's going to be good for them. I think that guys like RJ, Caleb, Kerwin, Walker Kessler, I think that that's just experience they have, and they don't want to have this feeling again, so I believe that they'll come and work really hard. We do have time for another question or two for Garrison. If there are any, please raise your hand. All right. Uh, Brennan Marks from The Athletic. Yeah, Garrison, I just wanted to follow up on Greg's question. I, I know the lot, of, you know, this game just happened, so obviously there's still a lot of time, but you know, what will your process be for sort of figuring out what the next steps are for your future? Uh just sit back and think uh how much I can accomplish anywhere. Uh just in case it's going somewhere else to stay here or going turning pro. I mean, it's just something I always think about. I think about it to myself and just come to a decision. All right, Greg Barnes. Garrison, you were kind of dealt a, a tough hand this year as, as a senior with so many young guys and all the COVID protocols. Uh, what were kind of some of the, some of the joys uh, that you could kind of embrace? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's always fun uh, coming in. You see guys come in and work hard. You see guys get better. I, I enjoy seeing guys get better because, I mean, 
that's something that they, they work they work out every day. They try to get better. That's something you see everybody dedicate themselves to. Also, just I always enjoy the friendships. Uh, just, I mean, the environment of us being together all the time and just hanging out all the time. I mean, playing card games, going going out to eat, just hanging out at the gym. Like, I, I enjoy that all the time. I mean, I think we had a great group of guys, so I, I enjoyed it. Next question to Ross Martin. Uh, hey, Garrison, was there any message you had for any of the young players or any of the freshmen who, who are going to be back next season? I mean, what did you tell them in the locker room? Is there anything you, that stood out to you? Man, just uh, uh, everybody always going to say, remember this feeling, but I always tell them, man, just keep your head down and work to yourself. That's always going to be something that, that, can, that you can do because you control your own destiny and you're, you're in control of your own game, so it's on you to get better. Next question for Grant Flood. Hey, Harrison, I'm Grant Flood from Insider Institute. My question to you is, how has it been knowing that this season, uh, excuse me, tonight you had some fans in the crowd. What were your opinions on that? Were you happy to see some fans tonight? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always great. My family got to come to the game. Um, so I enjoyed seeing them before the game. Glad, glad they got in, got in here and enjoyed that last game here. And I think it's uh, – it's always good to see people, see people in the crowd. I think that's something that, that people always build off of, crowd energy. I think that's something good. Next question goes to Adam Smith. Adam, go ahead and unmute yourself. Garrison, I think Brad Davidson, uh, number 34 for them, I don't think he was averaging double figures on the year, and he obviously kind of went crazy. What do you think got him off? And, and, you know, as you guys were studying then, did you see any of that explosiveness out of his game? Uh, truly, I didn't see any, see any explosive, but he showed it today, so that's all that matters. But he came out ready to play. Okay, we have time for one more question for Garrison. All right, Garrison, thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you all. Thank you. That's it for the post-game press conference tonight. A transcript of Coach Williams' interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with a recording of this press conference on the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us and have a good evening.